If you'd like to follow along, you can download this model from my GrabCAD account. The uh, link to download is in the description of this video. I want to go over how to deal with uh, doing complex internal cavities and checking their volume and uh, different strategies and how to get updating properties on drawings and things like that. Uh, here I have the cylinder head and you can see I've got uh, coolant inputs in these curved slots. I have freeze plugs that will go in here. I have an outlet. I have a sensor port. I have all sorts of things that are connected to uh, my coolant lines running through this cylinder head. And let's say an associate engineer asks me to give a volume for fluid specs on what the volume is in these channels total. How would I do that? Well, here's one method. I want to take anywhere that fluid will come out of the part, any opening, and plug it up with a plane. So I'll choose the face that has all these uh, uh, ports, and I'm going to say plane at zero offset. And so I'm kind of, in a way, sealing these ports with a invisible reference plane. I can tell that fluid will come out of the bottom. So I'm creating, a, again, a sealed cavity with these planes. And uh, I can even, to better illustrate this effect, sort of pull this plane over to the next face. So I've got four planes that are plugging up the coolant channels. If these planes were solid, then coolant could not escape from the cylinder head. That's what I want. I'm going to hit Control shift and highlight all of my planes, and then choose the Intersect command and choose my body. I'm going to highlight Create Both and Intersect. If you're not familiar with intersect, uh, create intersecting regions is simply if I have two overlapping bodies, then the overlapped bodies will exist as solids and everything that isn't overlapping will be deleted. If I say create internal regions, then anything hollow and sealed between two bodies will be created and the solid bodies will be deleted. And cap plant or uh, create both will create both intersecting and hollow regions. And that's what we want here because that will be the easiest to work with moving forward. Okay, with this intersecting, you can see we've created the uh, coolant uh, volume within these planes. And uh, of course, I can click to remove anything that I want. I'm actually going to remove the end result that I want and simply invert selection to simplify my process. So that is actually uh, the geometry of our coolant channels. Uh, I'm going to click the green check to accept. All right, uh, now that we've done that, I can, uh, for convenience, select my planes and hide. Of course, I deselected uh, some of these, so I'll hide them from over here. If my planes are gone. If I wish, I can even make this a little bit more of a coolant appearance. I can choose the intersect feature and uh, give it kind of a green ethylene glycol color. Looks a lot like coolant now. So that's our coolant volume. It's easy to come to the uh, Evaluate tab, say Mass Properties, and uh, 12.66 cubic inches is the uh, overall volume. Now, if I were to make a drawing of this, it would be not good form to just write the volume as 12.66 cubic inches because if something changes in my model that changes this volume, the drawing will say 12.66 cubic inches, and who in their right mind is going to think to, uh, to make that update to the drawing. So there's a better way. Uh, why don't we uh, choose our properties here? And going to the custom tab, we can create a custom property. You can see all I did was type in coolant volume. And then I went to this drop down arrow and chose volume of my part. And we'll say OK to that. Now, why don't we uh, make a drawing from this part? In case you're unclear, I'm going to choose a regular old format, whatever. In case you're unclear on how to do this, I'll put in an arbitrary drawing view. And uh, again, this would probably be part of the title block, but for demonstration's sake, I'm going to make a simple volume. And uh, you can add in another note, you know, creating kind of a placeholder here. We're going to say, 
Oh, I don't want to hyperlink rather, but rather link to a property. I'm going to choose model found here. And then under property name, coolant volume is the property that we've come up with. And there's our 12.66. I can save that. So we'll come back to this drawing in a moment. Some of the other questions you might have are what if I want to see what the volume is, if, if it's half full? Or what if I want to be able to type in a number or a percentage of how full this um, thing might be and see what the output is? Well, we can do that. And this may not be that applicable for a cylinder head, but if you have a tank or a chemical reactor, uh, this would be very applicable. So let's go over some strategies on doing that. Uh, I'm going to create another feature. In fact, I'll do this. Um, I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this. I'm going to create a driven dimension. Let's go from the very uh, top to the very bottom of our part. It looks like SolidWorks may not want to uh, cooperate with me, so I'll use a construction line to augment. Um, so I've got this construction line from the very top to the very bottom of my coolant channel. And we're going to make that driven. Notice uh, when I highlight the sketch, I can highlight the sketch name here. So I'm going to copy that name. Right, D1 at sketch 69 is 1.01. .01. And should this overall height change or be updated, this dimension should change with it unless you have some reference errors, which uh, you would want to avoid. You'd use things like replace entity or something like that. I'm going to hide this sketch. I'm going to create a sketch on my top plane. I'll use a center rectangle. And I can create an arbitrary dimension. I'm going to create one inch wider just to make sure that we stay on the uh, outside if something updates. One inch here as well. And uh, let's go with features extruded cut. This is a cool thing I want to say offset from surface here. And you can see now we've got a little bit of a height going on. We're going to keep all bodies. And uh, I want to insert some tools now. Let's go with equations. We're going to say fluid height from bottom. And uh, let's add a value, say 0.25. OK. And what I can do is come down to uh, my extrude cut. And instead of giving that an arbitrary value, I put an equal sign, global variables, and there's the fluid height that I put in. And we'll keep all bodies again. This is a beautiful thing now because what, what that has bought me is I can update on the fly. I can change my fluid height to be 0.75. OK. Now if I go back to my drawing, notice my volume updates because now I'm at 8.94, so I have updating properties in my drawing. And I can update this on the fly. Notice my appearance didn't quite uh, carry over, but that's OK. Uh, but what if instead of saying a specific fluid height, what if I wanted a percentage? Uh, that should be rather easy. In fact, what I'm going to do temporarily, just so that I don't get rebuild errors, is uh, say 0.25 arbitrarily, just so that I break the link uh, to the global variable as I edit this. I'm going to go equations, manage equations. Uh, I'm going to select this button and actually delete my equation. And now I can add a global variable that says something like overall height, right? Because you have to know your overall height if you're going to do a percentage. I'm going to start a quote, control V, and do, do another quote, and that's my overall height dimension that I've tied in with a sketch. Next thing I can say is uh, fluid, I'm going to go with percentage. And uh, we're going to say we want this to be 
55% full, right? The next thing I want to say is fluid height. And we can say something like equals overall height. Notice that's in quotes. Times open parenthesis open quote fluid percentage divided by 100. And now we see 0.555 or 556 is 55% of 1.01. So it looks like the numbers are working out quite nicely. After I say OK, we're going to go all the way back down to our cut extrude. We're going to edit sketch. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant edit feature. And now we're going to say equals global variables fluid height. And that bought us the ability to specify a percentage instead of a height. So if I want to be 90% full. Now I immediately update to 90% the capacity of the fluid volume in our cylinder head. And that buys me the ability to open up my drawing back up and seeing that the volume immediately updates in my drawing. So those are some strategies in being able to not only determine what the volume is in a very complex cavity, but also being able to determine how to update drawings and uh, other information sources uh, with any changes made to the model and being able to ascertain quite easily uh, based off of percentages instead of just rote numbers. There is another way to do it and that is using design tables. It's a very effective way of doing it. Unfortunately, I use LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Excel and because I don't have an Excel license, I cannot run fluid or uh, design tables uh, on this machine. So, since that's out of the ballpark, I can't show you how to do that, but I hope this video was helpful, and if it is, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.